Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, my Lord Speaker, Deputy Speaker, members of the August Assembly of Parliament, Mr. President of the Republic of the Gambia, the First Lady of the Republic of the Gambia, Mr. Chief Justice, Honorable Ministers, Honorable Members of the Bar and the Bench, Members of the Diplomatic Corps and Consular Corps present here today, Venerable Religious Leaders, the Imam Ratib of Banjul and all Imams present here today, and the Supreme Islamic Council members, Mr. Bishop Odeko, and all the members of the Christian Council present here today. The Deputy Mayor of Banjul and the Mayor of the Carnifing Municipal Council, District Chairman of Divisions, Chiefs and al kalulus who are all present here today to witness this historic solemn occasion that is taking place in Gambia's House of Parliament. It is indeed for us as the children of Sardauda, who brought us up in the political arena to stand here today with pride. As much as we mourn this great son of Africa, a great son of Gambia, we, as the people whom he groomed, will not only mourn him, but will celebrate his successes and achievements, not nationally alone, but internationally, to promote and protect and uphold the dignity of the human race. Sardauda sacrificed his job to lead the People's Progressive Party when at that time there were only two Gambians who were heading departments, Dr. Jones of the Medical and Health and Sadawda Kewara Jabara of the Department of Veterinary Science. At that time, in colonial days, there is nothing more big in terms of positions than heading a department. He sacrificed that because a call was made on him by the Gambian people to come and lead a crusade against colonialism, against tyranny, against suppression. He took it up, although he didn't know what was in front of him, but Gambia was worth everything to him. I want to thank the two 42 ladies sitting here, Lady Chile Jawara and Lady Njeme Jawara, and to extend our condolences to the family of Sadawda Kebara Jawara, to the families of the Fosters, the families of the Njais, and the families of the Mojan. This is a collective occasion where all Gambians have something to say, to contribute, and be part of this solemn occasion because Sadawda was for the Gambia and for not, one, not for one individual or one tribe or one religion. Sadawda was a Gambian. He proved it when, when the initiators and forefathers of the PPP went to him and said they want to form a party and lead, make him to lead it and it's called the Protected People's Party. He advised them strongly that the unity and cohesion of Gambia is more important. Therefore, let us have a party that encompasses every Gambian, irrespective of where you come from, which tribe, or which religion. And he proposed a new name called the People's Progressive Party.
Thank you, Sir Dauda, for making Gambia one united front, one united family. He championed the independence of this country and became our first prime minister. Look at his, the first referendum for us to become a republic. We lost the referendum by less than 500 votes. And the supporters of the PPP called up a meeting in Farababanta for him to declare a republic. He said no, because we have lost, even if it was one voice, one vote, we should not undermine the constitution and legal instruments of this country. And he even said, if they want to force him, he was ready to resign. But he will never, ever agree to anything that will violate the laws of this country. What a great man. And it was only after the second referendum that he became the president of this country. We are pleased to have here a big delegation, important delegation from Senegal, from Madina Bay, who have come to witness this occasion. We thank you very much for leaving Senegal, coming up to here to witness the burial of the greatest son of Gambia, Sadawde Kerba Jawara, who had a very serious relationship that I know with Bayanyas, even when before he became a politician, as a veterinary doctor, he visits Kaulak and do, go to Bayanyas, and this continued even after he became a politician. We thank you very much, the Senegalese delegation, for coming, and please continue to pray for the friend of Bayanyas lying here in state today. Mr. Speaker, Sado they realized the importance of Gambia and Senegal. That is why immediately after independence, he sat with Senghor and they signed a declaration and an agreement on education, culture, youth, and defense. And because of that foresight, we were able to be saved from the desperation and treacheries of terror in 1981 when Kukwai Samba Sanya waged war against the Gambian people. We thank Senegal for their intervention and accepting and respecting the agreement that was initiated by Sadaw Dakaraba Jawar. His achievements, we know his humility, his openness, his tolerance, and his accommodation and his ability as president, as leader, to listen and accept advice was one of the biggest and the most successful values that all of us are copying from this great person. So I doubt that we will never forget about your legacy and we live by it, not only talk about it, so that we once again see Gambia to become the peaceful country of the world. When Ahmed Sekou Toure and Senghor were at each other until there was time going to be war, nobody sent Sadao that he got up on his own initiative and go and talk to these two heads of states and bring them together and make sure peace took place between Gambia and Senegal. And for the first time, each of the countries sent diplomatic positions to the other country thanks to this great person. When Ofebwanyi and Ayadema had a problem, Sadar took it upon himself to go and negotiate between two countries until there was peace between them. When Liberia and Sierra Leone for the Mono River thing had their problems, Sadar was the one who went and negotiated and make sure there is peace in these countries. When the war of Iran and Iraq took place, Sada was chosen as one of the committees for the mediation of peace. 
And unfortunately, the chairperson of that mediation team died immediately after. That was the president of Guinea, Ahmed Sekou Toure. And unanimously, the UN agreed that Saudi should head that team. And through Saudi's effort, peace was established between Iran and Iraq. ECOWAS, he was one of the initiators. That is why the name ECOWAS emanated from Sadauda and his then Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, I am Gaba Jahumpa. And his play and his activities in this community, all Gambians know about it, all Senegalese and everybody in the sub-region knew about Sadauda's activity to bring about change and development in the west coast of Africa so that our dependency on foreign aid should stop. We should be able to make sure what he said, to, to be able to be self led do things for ourselves. Sadauda makes sure because of his beliefs in human rights, rule of law, good governance, and the dignity of the humankind, Gambia became the safe haven of all the countries of its region where there were despots and one-party states. They came, and when they are in Gambia, they are not taken as foreigners, but they are taken as human beings, and their rights are respected. And Gambia became the biggest safe haven of people from the sub-region running away from despotism, suppression, and violation of their rights. It is there for everybody to see. There are countries that have gold and diamond and oil. Instead of Gambians going there and fighting, they are here with our peanuts, thanks to Sadaud. For 29 years of Sadaud's rule, not one Gambian child crossed the desert to die or the Mediterranean to die. Because of his foresight, he built a cohesive relationship between his government and other governments based on respect for the independence and sovereignty of each and every state and non-interference. And we became a world icon whereby some countries like Norway, Denmark, Sweden, England, no Gambia needs a passport during Saadawda's time to go into these countries. Thanks to Saadawd. He was a great man. He had nothing to think about but the welfare of the Gambian people. How to uplift each and every Gambian from poverty to whatever you think you should be comfortable with and your family. Therefore, Sadauda made to us because of the characters of Sadauda, because of the values, the good values that Sadauda has put in us, that he doesn't tolerate tribalism. He doesn't tolerate religious discrimination. He doesn't tolerate sectionalism. And we have seen all of us here, his children are here. Sadauda has never used his office to promote his family or people who are related to him. All his children went to the same school that we went to. We all play football together without one police officer guiding them. He goes to the supermarket with only one police officer and Sadauda himself will be pushing the trolley when he was president. Therefore, we the Gambians owe it to ourselves, our children and generations unborn to inculcate in them this type of values that Sadauda has brought to bear in this country, whereby the whole world sees Gambia as the bastion of peace and stability, democracy and human rights. That is why in 1975, at the OAU conference in Kampala, Sadauda proposed that because of the historic dimensions of Africa, being the most dehumanized race of the world, Africa, because of our experience of slavery, our experience of colonialism, should establish 
a national institutional office for human and people's rights. He was able to convince his colleagues, the heads of states. But when it comes to establishing the headquarters, there was no country that can challenge Gambia for qualifying to have the headquarters today in Gambia. And up to today, is in Gambia, thanks to his wisdom. We, as Gambians, have seen that during Sadawda's days, agriculture was prospering. We are having strange farmers, what we call surgas, coming to live with our own farmers in the rural areas, and our own farmers feeding them because of the assistance in schools and other assistance he was giving to the farmers that these farmers from other countries come to live under our farmers. Our farmers were better. That is why in 1993, we were able to buy over 150,000 tons of nuts. But unfortunately, with the change, I was listening to the then Minister of Finance in 2015, that the total tonnage of the Gambia was 35,000 tons, a direct reflection on the poverty and degradation of the farming community. That is why our daughters, our sons are crossing the desert and dying in the ocean. Sadawda saw this. That's why he made the facilities so that our children will stay home and be responsible and be proud to be the sons and daughters of their motherland. The same thing happens when Sadawda became president. He established the Post Authority, GAMTEL, Social Security and Housing Finance Estate, and the GAMWORKS, and so many corporations to allow Gambians to uplift our economic possibilities and responsibilities. And these institutions are the biggest employees of this country up to today. And the boss, of course, I forgot the boss corporation. Therefore, I think we should learn from this wisdom of Sadao. For all the things that he has done. When you are entering Banjul, for example, we are in Banjul, we cannot talk about everything because there is time. During Sadao, the Sadao built the courthouse. He built the BBC complex. He built this um, clinic on Independence Drive. He built the children's wing and expanded the maternity wing of the RVH and extended 46 major health centers throughout the country and not only health centers but provide them with doctors and medications. That's why WHO chose Gambia as a training spread for Africa for primary health care. Thanks to Sadawda's wisdom. I would say, we are going to take him to a mosque called Kilfahad Moks. I was fortunate that when Sadawda went to South, Saudi Arabia to ask, ask for assistance to build a big mosque for Banjul, I was in that delegation. Unfortunately, we have a competent ambassador in the person of Dr. Omar Jack. They met the king, and the king made sure he provided King Fahad Mosque in Banjul, thanks to Sadaw the Kerabah Jawar. I can go on and on, because, but I have seen my friend here looking at me. I am ready to say, I'm happy to say, Mr. President and Madam Speaker, that there are some people here with us who started the struggle with Sadawda. Our Koroke is here, Honorable Kaluli Singate, being in the first cabinet of Sadawda and being part of the delegation institute that went to negotiate for the independence of Gambia. Alaji Azize is sitting here, the first parliamentary secretary to the prime minister. And these are the people whom we as young people brought us up 
through the very values that Saada would have put in them and make sure it is implemented by the day. We have there Asehu Sabali, the former vice president, Bakari Dabo, Bunja Dabo, and we have my first boss, Honorable Lamin Kiti Jaban, the longest serving cabinet minister under Saada Ude Kerawa Jawar. MC Cham is there sitting. And all these people were people who worked with Saada Ude as a team because Saada Ude never agreed to suppress or to impose. He was a real democratic leader. And his humility allowed all of us as young people who can be his son to argue with him and make sure we put our points across and he is never angry or he will never show anger to anybody who opposes any opinion that Sada Oda had. We have Mrs. Farmata Tambajang Jalo. But Mrs. Farmata Jalo Tambajang is here with us, who, close, who worked very closely with Sada Oda and became a vice president. My colleagues are here, party leaders who have come irrespective of parties. Sadauda, I can attest, sent me on three occasions to Sirif Diba when Sirif Diba was a leader of an opposition party. Sent me on two occasions to Asan Musa Kamara when Asan Musa Kamara was an opposition leader. For them to come and answer to him, you have something, national issues to discuss with them. All rivers flow to the ocean. Being opposition and being government, we are all supposed to work for one destiny and one country, and that is Gambia. And Gambia's interests come first before anything else. And that Saad Auda played that role, and he respected it. That's why I want us now to continue building that in our younger children, in the younger generation, that we will stop adoring people, we should stop making people God. Sadauda has never, ever done that. Finally, Madam Speaker, I want to thank and commend Lady Chile Jawara. I am one person who goes to Sadauda's home every other Sunday since he came from the UK, except if I'm out of this country, to have breakfast with him. And I see him how dedicated, how committed, how loyal Lady Chile was to this our old man. We thank you, we commend you, and we pray for you, for God to bestow you with prayers, and you and the whole family of Sada of the Kerala Jawara. You have made us proud. What the world says, the Mulo say you for it, then for say you won. Konak, sabes nyo na purnyu wako, te den kora wak. Because I am a living witness to your commitment, your tortures, everything, because taking care of an old sick person is difficult. Thank you very much, Lady Chile. I thank you all, and we pray that Sadauda will be more beneficial going where he is going than he was in Gambia. And our hopes have been uplifted from what we have heard from people. And God pays for something good that is being done by any person. And Sadauda have never done anything bad for this country. We pray for him. You are going physically, yes. But spiritually and mentally, you are in us forever and will try to emulate your standards your values and your characters, and make sure we don't only work by it, but we put it in the younger generations so that Gambia will be one of the nations to be emulated by all. I thank you all very much.